Hey people, welcome back to my channel. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Charmin Bath Tissue. What's it called? Is it bath tissue? Toilet paper. This is long, no, long lasting roll. It's a long lasting, long lasting roll. It's a long lasting roll, okay? Um, or a rouleau, rouleau, longue, or longue, dure. Nowhere on here does it say that it's a cure for the coronavirus or anything of that nature, but it is a soft, cushy relief for your bunghole. Do you guys remember the Mr. Whipple commercials? Do you remember? Like, yes, I am dating myself right now. Mr. Whipple, please, ladies, please don't squeeze the Charmin. I'm squeezing it, but it's not really giving me much back in return. Please don't squeeze the Charmin. All right, that being said, you know where you can find toilet paper? Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's had a fine supply of toilet paper and you can also buy it for a lot less than this Charmin that when I squeeze it, it doesn't do anything. When I squeeze my Trader Joe's toilet paper, toilet paper, yeah, toilet paper, that's what it's called, right? Um, it, uh, it's also very loving and soft and wonderful. So there, there you go. No, this isn't really brought to you by Charmin. So you're welcome, Charmin. You just got free advertising. Enjoy. What is going on with Lori Vallow? Did she see the Clinton body count and she was like, ha ha, hold my beer. We can outdo this. That's, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at all this. I It took me a few times. It's like when you watch Pulp Fiction and you have to watch it a couple times so that you can get all the, you know, things in order. Yeah, I had to watch that a couple times because I'm like, Oof. I'm so confused. And I am a natural blonde. I know it doesn't look like it when you look at my roots, but the curtains do match the rug. And sometimes I get confused. I mean, no offense to blondes, but this story has more twists and turns than a Tarantino movie, for sure. Anyway, yeah. Um, so that being said, we're gonna do Lori's numerology today. Up oh, and Jules would like to come and say hi. Come here, Jules. Nope, I guess not. He's not gonna come say hi. Oh, he just fell off the table. Ah, okay. So let's dive into that because this might take a few takes. Yeah. They need to bring Mr. Whipple back. Only this time he needs to be gangster as fuck. It's gonna be like, look, bitch, I told you. Only two rolls of shaman per customer. Don't make me tell you again or I'm gonna pop a cap in your ass. Two. Fucking rolls of shaman per customer. Yeah, no, not two rolls. Two 24 pack, nah. One 24 pack, one 24 pack. <sighs> All right, let's get back to this. Okay, um, Lori Vallow. Lori Noreen Cox was born. Why do I not have this written down? I do have this written down. She was born June 26th, 1973, making her a 52, which is a seven. She is the queen of swords for my tarot people. She is the queen of swords. So queen of swords and get this, this should not come as any surprise. Guess what her soul number is? Her soul number is a 37. The same as Letitia Stouck and uh, Megan Boswell. There you go. Um, her outer personality, how does she express herself? She's a four. So she expresses as a four. So she seems to be all put together uh, when you look at her, like she does um, like structured and all put together from the outside looking in. Her path of destiny is a master number 77 which then turns into a 14, which is a five. That's a lot of sevens. And I will tell you what happens. Sometimes with a 52 or a 20, 25, a seven, um, because they have trust issues, 
trust of self, trust of others, um, they are the ones to get suckered into, um, I'm not saying all sevens do this, no. But that's the one that sometimes it, if they don't necessarily trust their own feelings and their own heart, they will get suckered into following a certain person. These are the ones that can get caught up in cults or religious followings or things like that. Um, it's, it's an interesting characteristic. Now, let me tell you a little something about these, these doomsday groups. Um, that can be very compelling. They're very convincing. I remember when I was working with Marshall Masters over the whole Planet X Nibiru thing. Um, he, uh, he'd give me his books and we would have long, in-depth conversations about this. I remember one day we spent four hours at a Starbucks talking about all of this. And what I gathered from that is, well, if this happens, freaking take me out because I don't want to live through this shit. But it's a whole mindset that if you follow it, it it's um, it, it can really engulf you in fear and not necessarily even in fear, but in uh, being on the lookout for it. But this girl, at some point, she went from kind of having a grip on her life to not having a grip anymore. And she's kind of a nut bar. Um, at some point, I, I seriously think when I look at her body language in court, this chick thinks that she's such a high being that she's actually going to be raptured by July and she's just gonna vaporize and disappear. So this whole proceeding is really quite beneath her because all of those people that are in the courtroom are all gonna be left behind and she's just going to ascend. Seriously, that's, that's her body language. She's, she is so above this. Um, yeah, but she's a, seems to be a bit of a black widow of sorts. Um, here, Julie. Yeah. Um, so, Jules, say hi. What do you think? Jules thinks so, too. So how all of these men die in her presence, I don't know. But her first husband, uh, I don't know how many marriages that she's had, but Tylee's dad died of a heart attack. I wonder if they ever investigated that. And I wonder if he had a life insurance policy. And were they married when he died? Then she marries her next husband. And he had a life insurance policy. And then she gets involved in this group. And when she gets involved with this group, these doomsday preppers, they like to get a lot of food and supplies and store them. And what you'll hear about, like, say, the Planet X people, when you hear about the underground tunnels and all of that that starts at the, Den you know, there's stuff at the Denver airport that goes under underground. And I think it's, I mean, look it up. I'm actually not bullshitting. That's actually a real thing. Um, they will have enough food and supplies stored in the event that, say, something comes to take out the planet, and then all the elites will go underground and have all the food and supplies that they need in order to last down there, which to me seems like a crapshoot. If you're dealing with a lot of earthquakes and things like that, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess you're, you planned on building a pretty strong structure. Um, the thing that I've been finding with her is that she needs money, money, money. It's all about the money. And the more money that they can gain off of these life insurance, the life insurance, like they've been living off of Tammy's life insurance. Now, she thought she was getting her husband's life insurance, but because she threatened him that she was going to murder him if he got in her way, he took that life insurance and gave it to his sister. So she didn't get anything from that. Um, um, I need Tylee's middle name. So if anybody knows what Tylee's middle name is, can you shoot that over to me? And what about, uh, what about Chad? Is his, is his whole name, is it Chad? Does he have a middle name? Is he Chadwick? Well, did he come from a very proper family? Is his name Chadwick? I want to know, you know? I don't have anything on him. I've got his birthday and that's it. He's also a seven. He's a different version of a seven, but her being a 52 is so fitting. Her being the queen of swords is just so fitting. Here's the, here's the thing with queen of swords. The widow, the divorcee. Yeah, 
Um, but boy, when you work that in the negative, they can be a really bitchy, nasty person. Um, show, yeah, let's take a look at this. Um, on the day that Tammy died, Chad was in a 69, which is not only a sexual position, it is the Ace of Pentacles. So, yeah, money. And oh, Miss Lori, she went into the Wheel of Fortune. So that was a payout for them. Anyway, potential payout for them. All of this is about money. And just like that guy, um, Boudreaux, where they, uh, his ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-wife put a hit out on him. You know, somebody went by and shot at him. He had a life insurance policy too, and she was trying to get that money so that, I seriously, they, they like get supplies, money, to save them for the coming apocalypse and the return of Jesus. I guess that Jesus doesn't really notice when you when you kill people. Here's the thing. Okay, Alex Cox. Alex Cox goes in and he shoots Charles. Okay, so Charles supposedly has this aluminum bat, right? And he's a swinging, he's pissed off, swinging his bat. But then Alex goes and pulls a gun. Now, I'm no expert on this, but when when I've got an aluminum bat and you've got a gun, I'm gonna be like, yo, pff, pff, are we cool, you know? And to have to shoot him twice, you had to shoot him twice because he was coming back and running at you with the bat, really? You can't disarm a, a guy with a bat, you have to shoot him twice. And then he was like, oh yeah, yo, 911. Um, yeah, I just shot somebody in self-defense, so, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's here. I mean, I can try CPR, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll just be chilling. I'll just be chilling here, waiting for you. And then Lori throws a party. Lori throws a party at the house where Charles dies the same day. Because a little party never killed nobody. Little party never killed nobody. Yeah, what the fuck? I mean, who does that? She had a pool party. She's like, well, I have to have a pool party because, um, yeah. I mean, this is a crazy person. This person is crazy. Um, here's the deal. Now, who was at the house that day? Charles. Rest in paradise. Alex Cox, Lori, Tylee, and JJ. Alex Cox is now dead. Tylee we can't, is missing, and JJ is missing. All of her witnesses are gone. Anybody who could say what happened, anybody that was there that could actually say what happened are all either dead or conveniently missing. That's pretty goddamn convenient. What about uh, Chad saying, oh, you know, I see Tammy dying in my many psychic visions. And, oh, Chad, do you still see Tammy dying? Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Don't autopsy her. No need. No need. You know, and, and we're still waiting on results. You know what? Do you guys find this is crazy? We're waiting on the cops to release information to us so that we can continue doing what we do. You know? It's like, God damn it, cops. God damn it, would you just freaking release the information so we can continue? All right, so I need Chad's full name at birth. Don't have it, I only have his birthday. Um, and then did you see this, um, the group that they belong to? They're like, we really resent being called a cult. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you call us a cult? Okay, we won't call you a cult. Alex, Alex Cox just happened to, to die, to die the day that Tammy's exhumation happened, the day that they exhumed Tammy, then Alex died. Interesting. Where was Lori? Lori, 
<sighs> Lori was in her destiny number of a 77 on that day. The 77, by the way, in the tarot deck is the Nine of Pentacles. I wonder how long before Chad was going to die. I wonder if Chad's always like, God damn, this bitch is going to kill me. You know, do you think he, he knows that she's going to kill him? Interesting. Chad, let's see. I brought all these notes and now I don't know what goes to what. So I think at some point, maybe Lori was legit, but then she got caught up in this mess and it really fucked with her head. And because she don't, I, you know, she doesn't really trust her heart on things. She goes with her head. She, that's how she was allowed to um, get sucked in to this. But when I look at numbers and I look at full names at birth, like it is on your birth certificate, that's really important. Um, She's missing a lot of numbers in her name. So she's missing a one, a two, a four, a seven, and an eight. Now she makes up for the sevens because she gets them all back between her life lesson, her soul vibration, and her path of destiny. There's a boatload of sevens there. But she's missing a lot. So it's almost like, so say if you have an extreme number of like, like say you have a whole bunch of fives in your name, which is common. Um, or you have like a whole bunch of threes in your name, but she she doesn't. She's got she's got one, two, three. She's got four fives in her name, and then one, two, three, four sixes in her name. But she's missing a bunch of numbers, and I just think that the numbers that you have in your name kind of help build you. It's really interesting the way that it works out rambling today kind of like this story the story rambles too but I'm looking at her divine triangle she is in her 64 one block right now which means that she is in the ten of swords right now so she's gonna have to own it and then once she hits her next block which is gonna go 54 years old to 63, she's in a 45.9, crying over spilled milk, crying over the past. That's if she makes it this far, you know, who knows? She might, um, she might get raptured in July. She really does, I mean, her attitude, when you look at her, people are like, what the fuck is wrong with this woman, you know? But she literally thinks that she is like some high priestess or somebody who has been brought here, um, ascended master, who is here and she is so above what is happening to her right now and she's just and it's almost like a, i'll show you i will show you i am so much better than you and when i just vaporize from this place and y'all can suck my ass that's really her attitude she's really something um but really in order for me to put everything together i need I need some stuff. The only person I was able to put together for numerology was JJ. Joshua Jackson Vallow. Joshua Jackson Vallow. He is a 24, which is a 6 soul. He is a 37 1 outer personality. And he is a 61 7 path of destiny. Um... That, that to me always shows me sneaky kind of behavior. Um, but 61, seven, 16, seven, not, not, my, not my favorite destiny. He is a 44 life lesson, master number 44, which is an eight. Now we see people that have this, that means that they were given a certain number of challenges in this lifetime that they have to overcome, um, which he was. He's autistic. Uh, that means they have to follow certain steps. They have to follow certain order. Everything needs to be followed in steps. And otherwise, they either get ob obsessively stuck on a step and can't get past it, or they end up falling back and having to start over again. Chris Watts is a 44.8. There's a lot of people that have a 44.8, but um, and they do just fine with it. 
and this one though where he was reliant on this crazy bitch who then at some point told somebody she just didn't want him anymore well if you didn't want him anymore Lori why didn't you allow your future ex-husband to live and let him just keep his son why didn't you just allow that to happen I'll tell you why because there's no life insurance money in letting somebody keep their son and there's also no social security money coming from letting him keep the son um, this is all about money. Everything with her is about money. So she's still collecting Social Security on both Tylee and JJ. Um, Tylee is going to turn 18 when? Oh my gosh. Let's see. In. She's going to turn. When is she? I have all this written down somewhere, but this is kind of a hot mess. Um, all right, so if anybody can find Tylee's middle name, I need it. Not being able to pin down where they are. So there's, there's two potential scenarios. They either off the kids completely, or they're in like some sort of hiding underground. This is where I, I keep getting this underground tunnel thing. But I don't think that she wants anything to do with the kids because the kids just weigh her down. And uh, But she doesn't want anybody to know that because she's still collecting the money. And these two are all about money. And when she figures out a way to get Chad's money, she's going to get Chad's money. However, she got apprehended before then. So we'll see. And why is Chad still walking around? I'm not sure. But we'll see. I saw some post from one of his followers that said that Chad had explained everything to him and after he heard the story he knows that once Tammy's autopsy is done Chad's going to be completely cleared and everybody's going to know that Chad's just a great guy and all of this was false and they can all carry on with their their happy way everything's going to be all explained and then Lori can go get her hair done and her nails done and you know, live that life, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, I will go into a part two on this. It's not quite so scattered. And I will tell you what was happening on every single day when these people died. Um, I really need Chad's information. Well, hi, Jules. I need Chad's information. And um, then we can come to terms with that. So whatever you can get me, thanks for letting me ramble. And uh, I just don't want to go too long. You know, I'm going to have to go back to a real job on Monday. So oh, he's just not going for it. Um, which means that I have to really keep my energy up so that I can post away. So I'll get into more this weekend. But if anybody can get me a full name on Chad and a middle name on Tylee, that would help me a lot so that I know, because I already don't like where JJ's Path of Destiny went there. And uh, I don't like the things that Lori said. Lori is just, everything that comes out of her mouth is a freaking cry for help. She is a crazy person. And she should really watch what she says. I don't know why she thinks she's so far above everybody. Anyway, all right. Um, in the meantime, don't squeeze the Charmin. Huh, don't squeeze the Charmin, right, Julie? Right. We'll talk soon. Bye.